Hello everyone, welcome to this video on classical mechanics. In the previous videos, we have seen that what are generalized coordinates? These coordinates, what are these? The coordinates which would specify the given configuration of the system and they are independent of each other. Then we have defined the degree of freedom for a system of n particles. And then we have talked about the configuration space. Thereafter, we came to Lagrangian approach for equations of motion and we also told that how this approach, this is better than the uh, existing Newton's approach to define the motion. And uh, this Lagrangian L, which is a function of qj, qj dot and time, that is a scalar quantity and uh, it does not involve vectors and forces as such. Next, we talked about ignorable coordinates. These are the coordinates which uh, are not, which are also cyclic coordinates. And when you uh, take the derivative of the corresponding Lagrangian with respect to some coordinates, say qj, then it would come out to be zero. So this was the definition for ignorable coordinate. And moreover, in the last video, we also saw, uh, saw that del L by del qj dot is equal to pj and del L by del qj is equal to pj dot where what is this pj? This is the associated momentum for the gth particle. So this we have defined in the previous video, right? So now building on this, uh, if the corresponding coordinate re representing displacement that is cyclic, in that case, our linear momentum is conserved. That means if we are, uh, if we have a system and we are providing a translation to it, then it has no effect on the motion of that overall system. That means the system remains invariant under translation. In that case, our linear momentum would remain conserved. That is the property for this ignorable coordinate. Another property is that if we are rotating some system, about any axis, then that rotational coordinate also does not show any effect on the motion. In that case, we can call that as ignorable or cyclic coordinate. And in that case, the angular momentum, the corresponding angular momentum that will remain conserved because this momentum is only affected by the rotation of the system. So ne next, we shall also talk about the conservation of energy and uh, con uh, consequently, we will see what is Jacobi identity. So let us get started. Here, uh, we are making an assumptions. We are making few assumptions. First one is that our system is conservative. That means this L that depends uh, only on qj's and time, right? And not on qj dot, that means del L by del qj dot, that would be equal to zero because our system is conservative. And uh, the constraints involved, they also do not contain in, uh, time. And the Lagrangian, that is only the function of qj and qj dot, right? So uh, this is the definition. Uh, now le let us define uh, let us take the derivative of this Lagrangian. So the de taking the derivative because now this is a function of uh, q1, q2 up to qn and correspondingly it is also a function of q1 dot, q2 dot up to qn dot, right? Where these are the generalized coordinates and these are the generalized velocities. So now you are to take the complete derivative of this Lagrangian with respect to time. That means we are to take the partial derivative of L with respect to all of these n coordinates. That means del L by del qj. And then thereafter, these are all, all functions of time. So thereafter, we, we have to perform their derivatives with respect to time. So this is what we have done. And this thing uh, has been done for each of n particles. So we will have terms like del L by del Q1 into del Q1 by del T plus del L by del Q2 into del uh, D Q2 by DT and so on. These are for these uh, generalized coordinates and similarly we'll perform the 
derivative using uh, these n generalized velocities as here. So now look at this term. Here this term is this one because we can utilize the re relations given over here. Right? So this is this and accordingly and we have these two relations right so uh, one should remember these relations these are really important so here what we are using we are converting del l by del q j is equal to p j dot so that is p j dot this one and uh, then you can write p j as derivative of p j and what is p j p j is again using this relation it is equal to del, uh, del l by del q j dot so we obtain at the end del l by del q j that is equivalent to ddt of del l by del q j dot so we'll substitute this value over here so let us see what do we get we have del l by del t as such summation as such the value of this would now become ddt of del l by del q j dot so this term and then uh, we can write this term as the derivative of qj that means we we have written it as qj dot now and uh, the second term as such so now can you can we club this term yes we can club this whole term as the product of del l by del qj into qj dot and taking its derivative so when you apply the differentiation on this term so you will take the derivative of first term keeping the second as such like here and then you'll uh, take the you'll keep the first term as such and take the derivative of second so you will obtain this term so ultimately uh, our terms we have dl by dt as such and then uh, you can write this term as summation as such d, d, t, d by dt as such this term is what this is our pj so this is pj and qj dot why pj because of this earlier relation this is pj and so we obtain from here d d t uh, we can move the terms to the right hand side so we obtain this term right now derivative of some quantity is zero that means the quantity itself is a constant so this constant is known as the constant of motion and let us call that by j this j is the constant of motion and this identity over here this is known as the jacobi's identity and moreover if the given qj's they are functions of pj's in that case we call this j to be h and that h is known as hamiltonian so basically our Hamiltonian this becomes simply summation pj qj dot minus l and this is also equal to a, which is a constant. So here we have defined the Hamiltonian one should remember what a Hamiltonian is and you should also remember what the assumption what, what are the assumptions that we made during uh, uh, deriving this identity so we have assumed that our system is conservative constraint do not involve time and the Lagrangian is a function of qj and qj dot only so this is what we have uh, assumed so this is our Hamiltonian next in the previous video we have talked about Hamiltonian and we have also talked that this Hamiltonian is uh, is a operator which is based on this set basis set qj and pj where qj's are the generalized coordinates and these pj's they are the generalized momentums right momenta these are the generalized momenta so uh, these h that is depending on this qj and pj and then we have this term as such minus l l is also a function of qj and qj dot and not t so this is the identity that you should note so here there, there is a term which says uh, this h sometimes it is known as the constant of motion and sometimes this h is known as is known to represent the total energy of the system so now uh, 
in some cases this is the case and in some cases this is the case so uh, this h is a constant of motion when it does not involve time and it is the total energy when the coordinate transformation that means previously you have r1 as your coordinates now you have converted your coordinates to q1 q2 up to these the generalized coordinates so this transformation it does not contain time explicitly that means this these are eyes they do not depend on time as such so this thing is not uh, this thing should not be there but these q1 q2 q1 they obviously depend on time so that is why we say this coordinate transformation should not contain time explicitly in that case the hamiltonian that represents the total energy of the system so uh, moreover we in the last video we have uh, compared our approach lagrangian approach with that of hamiltonian's approach so let us also make few more remarks regarding this so uh, here in the lagrangian approach we had used the basis set qj qj dot and t whereas in hamiltonian our basis set becomes qj pg and t where these qjs they are the generalized coordinates qj dot they are they were the generalized velocities and this pjs they are the generalized momentas and this t represents time so here independent coordinates were only qjs and time and because these qj dot they were depending on qjs and here in this case the independent coordinates they are qjs and pjs and time so all of these are independent coordinates moreover for n particle system our path is represented by three n dimensions if you have remembered in we have uh, shown this through various uh, figures in the previous videos whereas here it it includes six dimensions why because in the first case we only had q1 q2 up to qn coordinate independent coordinates right and for each n particles we had three dimensions so that is why overall we have we got 3n dimensions whereas in this case we have n position coordinates that means 3n position coordinates according to three dimension and we had n momentum coordinates that means 3n momentum coordinates in three dimensions so overall we had 6n dimensions to represent this system the space corresponding to the lagrangian that is known as configuration space and we have already studied about this whereas the space corresponding to hamiltonian that represents the phase space so this is the definition over here of phase space right so uh, in the phase space actually what we are doing we are saying there is only one possible path in phase space for a system of particle why because here you have six n dimensions so six initial values are provided to solve the system whereas here for a point and uh, for a point we had infinite number of possible paths why uh, was this the case because initially we only had three values which could re which could define the system so here uh, in configuration uh, space the system is not completely defined using these 3n coordinates whereas in phase space we can completely define the uh, state of any system so all in all Uh, in phase space the advantage of using this phase space is that there is less arbitrariness about the path and comparing to the configuration space moreover we can also say that the path given in phase space that is the actual path which the particle follow so it re it gives you the complete information about some particle moving uh, or the system of particles moving in the space so uh, that is it for this video thank you for watching